Hi everyone, Summer here with Astaria Sen, and we are on the next seven days <laughs> of the of Ethany's 31 Days of Tarot for January 2021. Okay, so um, I'm actually not doing seven days, I'm going to be doing six because I don't want to do day 15. I'm not going to do day 15, so bye-bye day 15. <laughs> So we're going to jump right in to day 16, <laughs> which is, which tarot decks give you the most insight by way of imagery and symbolism? So there are two decks in my collection that give me um, really good insight by way of imagery and symbolism that isn't just traditional, this is what they mean kind of decks. Um, the first one is Shadowscapes. Uh, I really like the way the artist draws and I can get a lot out of it based off these, off her artwork. It's really profound to me, the Shadowscapes deck by Stephanie Perman Law. And I get a lot from it and it's not, I don't gain traditional knowledge or traditional insight from it because these cards just... I don't know, they just don't go that way for me. I mean, look at this. How pretty is that? Holy cow, guys. Holy cow. Which one's this one? This one is the Empress. Such a pretty card. She does such phenomenal artwork. And the other one that I that I have that I don't have out is the Fairy Lights Tarot. And the Fairy Lights Tarot, which you guys have heard me talk about on this channel before. And if you haven't, all you have to do is go through my <laughs> channel and you will see that I talk about it a lot in almost any tarot decks video that has to do with some kind of imagery or uh surprise <laughs> honestly i even talked about it in the blind date one <laughs> so anyways um the fairy lights tarot has this idea of um the artist took one picture drew drew a picture for the for the tarot, like do several pictures for the tarot, but he like cut them in half. So one picture might be a major arcana and one picture might be a court card or one picture might be a minor arcana and one picture might be a court card, but they go together to create one whole. So it's like have a picture one in one and you put them together as a whole and it gives you a whole new meaning to the entire reading, which is so amazing <laughs> when I'm reading with it that it's it's really thrilling. I really, really enjoy it. Maybe what I'll do on my channel one of these days is just do a reading like that so you guys can kind of see how it works and how beautiful it really is. Anyways, so number 17, because I don't like to have very, very long, long videos revolving around all of this. So short and sweet is my motto here. <laughs> 17, what tarot card do you like for, or do, do you look for when you're buying a tarot deck? And if you don't like it, does it ruin the deck for you? So usually I look for like, I look in general for what the devil card might look like, what the star card might look like, and what the moon card might look like. I don't, I can't say that it will necessarily kill the deck for me, ruin it for me, or keep me from necessarily buying it. It has a lot to do with a lot of the other cards too, but those are cards that I very much go to. Um, I have found that recently, if I go to the devil and I read in the book that um, it's a certain way, that the devil's depicted a certain way based off how somebody sees it, I may or may not buy the deck based off that, which may sound really strange, but the devil card is one of those cards where I think that people need to have more of an open mind. And when that doesn't happen, it's harder for me to be okay reading with the deck, I guess. I can't explain it any better than that. And it's only recent that this has happened, like in the last few months. So I'm not really sure if that's something that's going to stick with me or not. But it, And it might be just be feelings and emotional um, way that I've been the last few months. But I don't know. Anyways, um, however, one thing that will keep me from buying a tag is court cards. And if they are pips, because I do not like pip decks. So if they are super, super pippy, I'm not going to buy it. It doesn't matter how pretty the rest of the art is. I will not buy it. <laughs> All right. Uh, number 18. Do you read reversals? Why or why not? Okay. So reversals. Yes, I read them, but not like, uh, like traditionally reading with them. Like I don't read it in reverse. Uh, I will read it based off what the actual cards are saying. So if you have a three card spread and the reversal is the most likely um, quality for that spread, 
based off the querent's question or my question or something like that, I will read the reversal into it, but not necessarily as a reversal itself. I hope that makes sense. Because it's the idea that each card has a dark and a light to it, right? Just like anything else. I mean, it doesn't matter how positive the message is. There's a darker aspect. There's a flip side to that message, depending on how the querent or you decide to take it or decide to make choices. So that reversal is always going to be there. I don't read it specifically. I read it based off the energy of the actual cards in the reading altogether, not singly. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> Okay, uh, number 19, share which deck gives you the heebie-jeebies. Okay, um, I don't really get like heebie-jeebies, so to speak, from um, art necessarily or anything like that because as an artist, everybody has their own take on artistry and stuff like that. I would say that demon decks give me the heebie-jeebies, but honestly, even that necessarily wouldn't. It has more for me to do with how the deck feels energy-wise than it does anything. If I pick up a deck and brand new, used, or whatever, if it has a bad feeling to it, it'll give me the heebie-jeebies. And I have, I have actually felt a deck that was so weighed down with such negative energies, I couldn't even handle holding it. Like It felt like a brick in my hand like I was just falling <laughs> and I could not I couldn't even just I couldn't so I gave it back to the person and I said look I said I can't do anything with this deck I even tried cleansing that deck and it did nothing for it so I do think that there is an energy that comes with decks that can cause me to have the heebie-jeebies and that's more what I go on rather than depiction of art necessarily <laughs> though ghosts and demons do get to me I don't really want to read with those kind of cards, but they don't necessarily give me the heebie-jeebies. But if you want me to be specific, anything with a spider in it is going to give me the heebie-jeebies. I, I can have a deck that has a spider in it. I just don't like the card that has the spider in it. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Um, let's see. Number 20. Uh, the favorite, your current favorite tarot spread. So um, I don't know that I have a current favorite tarot spread. Recently, people have been asking me to do like a three card spread a lot. But for myself or when I go to tarot uh, nights, like the class nights where we all get together and kind of learn from each other, I generally like doing a five card tarot spread um, based off one that I made. So the first card would be like represents you. The second card is like your higher self or something somebody wants to tell you. This card's and the third card's gonna go sideways. It's the card that's bothering you, annoying you, pissing you off, you know, shut up in your face kind of card that you kind of just wanna ignore, don't wanna look at, whatever. It's that thing that's niggling at you. And then the card right below it is straight up and down. And it's the card that can um, help fix whatever that issue is. And then the last card, which is the fifth card, is the overall um, energy or end of the reading, like what's going to come out of it or something like that. So that's the kind of reading that I generally do when I do my card spreads is that um, it's my current, I guess my current favorite go to for anything else. Uh, 21. It's the final question and the last one. And then I will see you guys again next week with some more. Yay. Okay. 21. What cards relate to you personally, not just your astrology, astrologic cards or the court cards? So me personally, um, star card and the moon card are the two that I feel um, relate to me the most. The star because I'm very um, fairy star orientated. Uh, I'm not necessarily celestial, so it's not the celestial aspect of the star card, but more the idea of hope and positivity. And I'm all about um, that hopeful looking on the brighter side. And it's that hope that comes after all this awful stuff that happens. That's how I view the star card. That's how I kind of see it because the star comes right after the tarot. Tar oh gosh, I can speak tower card. Ha. Okay. So that hope comes next because there's light at the end of the tunnel, right? So hope is my card. It's my go-to. It's my, I love the star card. I love looking at the star card in most decks because it's always so beautiful. And then the moon card, um, I really like the moon card because it represents a lot of the stuff that I do in my own pagan um, faith. And I do a lot with moon rituals and moon stuff. So the moon card I kind of associate with on a, 
a different level, <laughs> I guess, so to speak. So that's all I have for you guys today. And I hope you have a very great weekend. I will see you guys again with more of the 31 Days of Tarot next week.